On to Article 11. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant as amended by vote of the first session for purposes set forth therein, totaling $26,599,431. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $26,528,092, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Town of Hampton or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 4013.10 and Roman 16. To take up the issue of revised operating budget only, majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5-0. Recommended by the Budget Committee, 10-4. Fiscal impact note from the Finance Department, the proposed operating Budget figure of $26,599,431 is an increase of $93,535 more than the budget amount adopted in 2015 of $26,505,896. The net estimated 2016 tax impact of the proposed operating budget is $0.3.4 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. The default budget figure of $26,528,092 is an increase of $22,196 more than the budget amount adopted in 2015, and the net estimated tax impact for the default budget is eight tenths of one cent per thousand dollars of valuation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 11? Yes. Moved by Ms. Latimer. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. Plouffe. I would like to recognize Eileen Matt Latimer as uh, chair of the Budget Committee. Ms. Latimer. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Our goal this year was to bring you a budget as even and level as we possibly could. And I think, despite all controversy, that was accomplished. Beginning of the budget year, I met with the town manager and ask that we keep as level as we could to the 2015 budget. The 2016 budget is only 0.35% greater than the 2015 budget. Also asked that there be a breakout of all new items into warrant articles. That way the voters could decide what they wanted, what they didn't want, and have a say in the impact. This amounted to about $440,000 worth of warrant articles. Um, they were withdrawn, and these items were paid by the surplus of the 2015 budget, so that no new funding was going to be asked or required by the voters and the taxpayers in the 2016 budget or warrant. So that was absorbed. Adjustments to the proposed budget as it was passed to us were made in areas that historically were overfunded or underspent. So we didn't go with any kind of a slashing mechanism that cut programs, cut raises, cut benefits. What we did is we looked at lines that, and I'll give a for instance, but not a specific, where perhaps for a number of years $50,000 had been asked for, but maybe less than 15 had been spent. Those were the types of adjustments throughout the budget that we looked to make. Additionally, fuel adjustments by both management and inspired by the budget committee were made throughout the budgets. As you all know, you know, fuel has considered, has constantly dropped. I don't know when the bottom will finally hit. But as we went along, we kept looking at new ways to save. Another way was found where we could benefit by getting the tax portion of the fuel back. There is now a new process in place. I believe the uh, town manager can acknowledge that. And we're currently in that position. Mr. Welch? Uh, uh, before we go afield, I want you to give us your Budget overview, please. And, this, uh, this is part of it, Mr. Moderator. Well, we're not going to have a dialogue between people. I'm at the just podium. asking for confirmation, but I'll, I'll move on. Thank you. And lastly, most of the insurance increases were absorbed 
by some of these changes. So that when we got to the end, the proposed budget by the budget committee, or the final budget proposed by the budget committee, was in essence, turn my sheet over, excuse me, because I want to give you an exact, $93,534 more than the proposed budget of 2015. Um, again, insurance increases were higher. Much of it was absorbed, but much of that 93000 can't go away because we did get hit this year um, at a pretty pricey note for the insurance increases. So with that, that is the budget wrap-up. That is the work. Um, and I would ask you all to vote in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Latimer. Thank you for your brevity. Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. One of the things that I've learned in my service in the state legislature is that even though you might not like what a, an existing law says, you are obliged <laughs> to stick with it unless you choose to cho change the law so that you can do what you want to do. This pertains to something that happened this year in the, in the uh, uh, budget process or the lack of budget process. It says in RSA, and uh, by the way, New Hampshire is a state where it's not home rule, where you can do whatever you want unless there's a law against it. We are exactly the opposite. You can't do anything unless there is a state statute, a revised statute annotated, an RSA, that says you can do it. And I would call to your attention RSA section 32 colon 5 Roman numeral 2, which says that all purposes and amounts of appropriations to be included in the budget or special warrant articles shall be disclosed or discussed at the final hearing. That's last year's uh, budget hearing, budget committee hearing. The governing body or budget committee shall not thereafter insert in any budget column or special warrant article an additional amount or purpose of appropriation which was not disclosed or discussed at that hearing. In other words, you can't finagle other things in there once you've gone through the budget. The purpose of the budget, it's the intention of the town to spend a certain amount of money for certain things. It comes under scrutiny, and you're not allowed to take things out and throw money around other than that. Now, what happens if you have extra money left over? Obviously, it is the duty of all of our elected officials to save money. It's not their money. It's taxpayer money. It's your money. It belongs in your pocket if there is not a valid reason for spending it. And RSA 32.7 uh, says that, uh, it, entitled Lapse of Appropriation, says that annual meeting appropriations shall cover anticipated expenditures for one fiscal year. All appropriations shall lapse at the end of the fiscal year, and any unexpended portion thereof shall not be expended without further appropriation unless and briefly, unless it's encumbered, unless it's placed in a non-lapsing fund, it's bonded, uh, it's anticipated that it's going to be uh, money received from, from the state or elsewhere. And, and that says that you can only spend what you say you're going to spend it for, and that's it. Now, during this past year, at the end of the year, and, and I, I commend the... the uh, Mr. Rice, you're, yes? you're at the three-minute mark, so I've got to ask you to wrap up your comments. I've We're got talking about several hundred thousand dollars, Mr. Moderator, and I think three minutes is not an adequate amount of time to make the point that needs to be made on this, with your indulgence. Well, I can uh, uh, put that out um, to a vote, Mr. Rice, or you can wrap up your comments. Last year, the Board of Selectmen approved $376,000 in expenditures that had not been through the budget process. Were they needed? Yes. But the clear intent stated by the Board of Selectmen, stated by other uh, uh, town officials, was that it was because they were tired of a lot of warrant articles and they didn't want to risk something not being approved. So they took an overage from last year's budget and they spent the money without any kind of public review. I like what they spend it on. I'm in favor of that. I do not like the fact that they spent it without any kind of public review. That's your money that they spent without any kind of public review. They talk about a bottom line budget. And yes, you can change things. Uh, you can move it from one part of the budget to another, but there is a condition. And the condition is uh, that the governing body may transfer 
to an unexpended, uh, unexpended balance remaining provided that, that uh, it, there is a change in purpose. This is, not, this is not anything that was in there before. These are new items that were added in because they wanted to circumvent the warrant article process and the public approval process. The money that was left over should have gone back to reduce taxes for the, for the town. And with that in mind, that $376,000, although I think that they were uh, ex expenditures for necessary items, I do not believe that they were done in conformance with the state statutes. And I would therefore move that we amend the town budget by an amount equal to those expenditures which, which were made on an unauthorized basis and reduce it by a, an amount of $376,000, making the budget amount $26,223,431. So I need that in writing. I need to have a second before I'll take it, Mr. Rice. I need a second. Seconded by Mr. Pierce. So Mr. Rice has made a motion to reduce the budget amount to $26,223,431. So we're on an amendment. We've got a motion by Mr. Rice, a seconded by Mr. Pierce. Mr. Bridal, do you wish to be heard on the amendment, the Rice Amendment, to reduce the budget to 26, 223, 431? No, Mr. Mr. Lang, do you wish to be heard on the amendment? Why not? All right. <laughs> uh, uh, one fi final thought, Mr. Moderator. I do not do this lightly, and I do no, not do I it do. with any malice. No, you don't need to I'm not happy it. about it. Okay. I just don't like this. Mr. Lang. Mr. Moderator, David Lang, um, 66 Park Avenue. Uh, Mr. Moderator and members of the committee, this is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And I apologize if we're inconveniencing anybody by, by speaking or by talking. One of the problems with the government that we have chosen, one of the problems is that we are left with this default. I rise opposed to this amendment, Mr. Moderator, before you rule me back to Jermaine. Um, one of the problems is we've chosen a form of government that, that puts us in this position of default government and choosing something we don't like less than something we like more, which is not a way to run a town. I stood up last year and I made an amendment to increase the budget. It failed. The people didn't want it. Let me tell you, this is not the way to budget. This is not the way to govern. To every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction, and we're talking about real services for real people. We're not talking about who's in charge and who's responsible and who should talk to who. I'm asking you to vote this down as someone who's been here for 35 years and seen the old town meeting form of government and seen us transition to this new way that pits board against board and person against person. So please vote this down. Let's move on with this article. Thank you, Mr. Lang. Mr. Jones, do you wish to be heard on the amendment? Yes, sir. Uh, I stand in favor of this amendment. And I won't get into the particulars because I was going to use those for the discussion on the motion as a whole. But essentially, I was not going to support the whole motion because it was higher than default. And I'll speak to that later when we get to that portion. But I will note that with the proposed budget being reduced below the default, it is far more likely that this proposed budget will pass at town meeting session two. And why is that important? Well, for one reason it's important is there are employee raises in the proposed budget that are not in the default budget. And many of those employees have had delays in their raises, unjustly in my opinion. And so by getting this below the default, we're helping to ensure that the proposed budget will pass and those people who deserve those raises will get those raises. And I'll also note that last year we talked about uh, the sky falling in if we didn't add, you know, well over a million dollars uh, to the budget that Budget Committee brought forth. And of course, the voters in town meeting session two voted that down. And the sky didn't fall in. They had an excess unspent uh, uh, money in the budget of something like $800,000, which Mr. Rice just spoke to. I find myself kind of awkward knowing that I'm agreeing with Mr. Rice. We often disagree at this point, but I'm happy to see things do change. Thank you. I do support this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, Ms. Latimer, do you wish to be heard on the Rice Amendment? I 
I seconded the Rice Amendment so that we could have this open discussion, but that doesn't mean that I would vote for it. Had a lot of disagreements this year on how things were done. But I will tell you that the budget that the Budget Committee came up with, they did somewhat in a vacuum of information coming in, but I'll give credit to every member on that committee for doing more work than I've seen people do in the total of 15 years that I've been on this committee. So it's a real budget. When it comes to money that was spent that would have gone on more in articles, we have as a budget committee absolutely no control over that. That is entirely with the Board of Selectmen and it is their will to do it. We cannot impact it. We can make recommendations, but we have absolutely no control. This was a tough year overall. We started out in the hole $252,000. The Budget Committee opposed it. As far as it being taken out of the reserves, management and Board of Selectmen held the line. Some of those things that were going to go on the Warren articles were things that were needed that may have been spent in the department budgets. We could have taken forever going back and forth. In the end, there wasn't a need to withdraw $252,000 from the reserves. Instead, $500,000 was, was taken from the reserves and it went against the taxes and benefited you in its entirety. When it comes to the things that we needed, we can debate that on and on. I'd certainly love to have a debate on the process and the lack of respect for the RSAs this year, but then again, that is a different conversation for a different time. As I stand here before you as Chairman of the Budget Committee, I would ask you again to go back to the $26,599,431 budget and have that and, and say no to this amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ladmer. Anyone else wishing to be heard on the Rice Amendment before we vote? Mr. Nichols. Let's see where we end up on the uh, amendment before we, uh, we end up with the final calculation of the tax impact. Seeing no further discussion on the Rice Amendment, we're going to take a vote on the Rice Amendment. If you're in favor of the Rice Amendment, if you're in favor of reducing the budget amount to the figure stated, 26223431, raise your voter card if you are in favor of the Rice Amendment. Thank you. Down cards. All opposed to the Rice Amendment, raise your voter cards. Thank you. Down cards. I declare the Rice Amendment has been defeated. We are back on the Article 11 as it was originally printed. Ms. Wolsey, do you wish to address the article? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I move to amend Article 11 as follows. Remove from account 41532-3230, under legal, called outside counsel, the amount of $299. Transfer to 01741911-32230, that's the planning board legal expense budget line. I would add $99 to that line. They already have $1 in there. They are an independent elected body and they need the flexibility, if necessary, to hire outside counsel to help them. Next, I would go to account 018419123230, zoning board legal expenses. They do have the line item in their budget, but it has a zero now. I would put $100 in that line. And the last is 0044130532303230, trustees of the trust funds, legal expenses. They need that line added, and I would insert $100. This amendment will not change the total budget figure. It's just reassigning the $299 so that the independent elected officials on the planning board, the zoning board, and the trustees of the trust funds have something in their legal line so that they can access out, outside counsel if necessary. Thank you. Uh, I'm, 
I'm not going to take a second at this time because my understanding is we're working on a bottom line budget and that the purpose of this body is to address those figures. So I take Ms. Woolsey's comments and she shared them with you, um, but my understanding, I'm going to look to council in a moment, is that um, we're not into um, setting those line items as much as we are here today to address the uh, the numbers in the in Article 11. We certainly can discuss those line items, but um, ask council if he agrees with that. I believe that's correct. It's a one figure number. Right. So uh, we understand the uh, effort to to move $299 around uh, in the budget, but it doesn't change the the, the uh, figure as presented. So. I'm going to just move on and see if uh, we have further discussion about um, the, uh, the budget. Mr. Uh, Bridal. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Nick Bridal, 225 Toll Farm Road. Uh, again, I'm on the Budget Committee and I did vote against um, cutting the proposed selectman's budget. Uh, when it came to us on the Budget Committee, it was a 1.94% increase. Um, that's ostensibly flat. Uh, the department heads did a great job at bringing the Board of Selectmen a, a nice, concise budget. Um, and where our department heads in this town are relatively new, especially in the bigger departments. Um, I, think it's, I think it's my opinion that the town give the department heads a little wiggle room and expect them to do a good job with the money that we give them and not cut them. They've done a great job bringing us a nice trim budget. I know there's been a lot of talk been thrown around the room about surplus and extra money left over at the end of the year. But for those of you who are unaware, department heads were asked to cut training this year almost halfway through the year. Cut unnecessary spending by the town manager. Because we had a lot of snow last year, we wanted to make sure we stayed within the budget. That's not how you effectively run a town. We wouldn't have that surplus money, in my opinion, if the department heads were given their money, not told to cut training, not, not taking away the materials and equipment they need that weren't deemed essential. Um, the money would have been spent instead of all at the end of the year to try to squeeze it into the last year. I say, and while I'm happy with the budget that's up there, the budget committee came up with, it's a good low number. Again, I was against it in the budget committee, but I say, let's give these department heads a budget and let's expect more of our, let, let's see what they can bring to the table and, and expect that of our department heads. I think they do a good job. I think it's time for this town to be more proactive than reactive. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Bridal. Mr. Jones to Article 11. Approximately $800,000 unspent from a budget that was deemed to be well over a million dollars, too short, and that we would experience the sky falling in upon us. $800,000 unspent. And now we hear that maybe it was because we didn't spend the $800,000 on training. I mean, the budget committee, we asked the department heads, what essential expenditures were you denied? And they all said none. We were allowed to spend what was essential. Tom Energy actually reported that the reason why we have $800,000 approximately unspent in the budget is because they only spent money where they absolutely needed to. Well, gee, shouldn't that be an everyday occurrence? Shouldn't we all spend money when we absolutely need to, especially government, which takes us money, of course, from compulsory taxes? They should be prudent enough to say, yeah, that's normal operating procedure. Spend only what's essential, but 800000 And then we also heard about $350,000 excessive snow from our snow last year. So you could actually add that to the 800000 and you can see that, gee, that makes over $1.1 million in excess that budget was, even though it was a default budget. Something's wrong here, ladies and gentlemen. Now you look at this particular budget, just look at the insurance line. They added to workman's compensation and liability 25% above the estimate that they got from one vendor. When asked where the 25% number came from, it was like, well, we were thinking 50, but we went 25. And I asked, well, why don't we split the difference and go 37 and a half? There was no answer. They went to 25. But eventually, the budget committee cut that 25% out of the proposed budget. But if you look at the default budget and the proposed budget, you see some rather interesting numbers. Last year, we spent $3.5 million on the insurance line item. This year, the Board of Selectmen proposed $3.773 million. 
The Budget Committee somehow only proposed $3.747 million. When we were told that cut that we were making was $285,000. Doesn't seem to be reflected there. But even more curious is the default budget, which is supposed to be what was last year, plus or minus, you know, blah, blah. Now it's way up, almost $4 million. Last year's budget, $3.5 million. Default budget, $3.949 million on that insurance line item. Now, there are examples of this kind of uh, curiosity is going on all over the place. All right, and I just highlight this one because I don't want to spend too much time. But the bottom line is I will tell the voters that whatever the number is on this one article in final form, pick the lower number because they're both inflated. And uh, you know, I, I really believe that we can improve the process and we will strive to do so, but these numbers are inflated and I'm not gonna get into the other topics because I've, I've, uh, I don't like hearing myself talk, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Yes, ma'am. Jen Hale, 13 Born Ave. Um, I just want to make one statement, and it's the exact opposite of that. When looking at these numbers, be educated to know what the difference is in the numbers. A default budget isn't just that much less. Every single department is affected, some more than others. It's services that are provided to the people in this town. It's services that are expected, and without the appropriate funding, you don't get those services. So I just say that lightly that make sure you know which number and what you're getting. Thank you, Ms. Hale. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 11? Seeing none, we will move on. To